your side from one mystic to another from one contented God loving soul to another we're here at the hermit's cave to salute and honor the mystic Johann Kelp also known as Johannius Kelpius first Rosicrucian to come to the Americas and that's a title that would make one to believe rightfully so that uh, Johann Kelp might have been down with the colonization scheme of Francis Bacon which is uh, you know was one of the main objectives of the Order of the Rosy Cross but uh, yeah my raw search and my meditation has uh, led me to the overstanding that Johann Kelp is the avatar that James Cameron movie the avatar where you had these colonizers who had a man intended to fulfill the mission but he unexpectedly and suddenly died so they had to get a replacement and that replacement even though he was good at what he did was supposed to do which was to connect with the indigenous and learn the land his heart wasn't with the colonizers he actually helped the indigenous resist colonization so just how that story unfolds in the James Cameron film Avatar that's what happened in real life where there was a Rosicrucian and a member of the Philadelphia Society by the name of Jacob Zimmerman and Zimmerman was all lined up to uh, lead this Rosicrucian order of 40 men to the Americas, to William Penn's colony in Philadelphia. They had the ship loaded up, crew ready, and Zimmerman died like two days before the ship was supposed to leave. So, because, you know, the ship was loaded, they had to go. So they looked to Johann Kelp to be the leader. And he was a young man, but he stepped up to it, you know? And he got over here. They established the order right here in, uh, you know, what is today East Falls, Roxboro. And uh, back in the day was the foothills of the Queens Mound, which, you know, all of Germantown, Mount Airy, Chestnut Hill is the Queens Mound, the Queen Goddess Winona's Mound, you know? And we're at like the base of it. So, you know, everything they dealt with was about 40. So there was 40 men in the order. The lodge they built was 40 by 40. Their cemetery plot for the commune was 40 by 40, you know? And this is the 40th degree of latitude. So they chose that because where this place is in prophecy is the 40th degree of latitude in the wilderness, the biblical wilderness where Moses wandered, where the woman clothed with the sun birthed the sun-clad man-child in Revelation. And there's a lot of biblical symbolism attached to the number 40, so they chose this land right here. And these Rosicrucians had been prepared 
and what we would call Bohemian studies or the studies of Jacob Bohem. And Jacob Bohem was commissioned by Francis Bacon to create a course of studies that would help cultivate the perfect colonizer. Francis Bacon had invested a lot of money in the Virginia colony, which ended in a utter disaster known historically as the Jamestown Massacre. And one of the main reasons why is because the people they used to be the first colonists were people drawn from the king's court. Tailors, perfumers, uh, you know, people who didn't really have life skills, they didn't know how to, uh, you know, forage for food, they didn't know how to create their own shelter, their own clothing, they didn't know how to grow no crops, and they didn't know how to get along with indigenous people. So Jacob Bohem created a course of studies designed to inform one of that, and Johann Kelp was one of his star students. He earned a PhD, young in his life. And uh, tradition says that he was a mystic, that the man could manifest powers, you know? That he was well disciplined with his spiritual studies and his spiritual liberty. And because of that, he could manifest power. And Kelp put his Bohemian studies to good use. He made strong connections with the Lenape, particularly the queen goddess Winona. And uh, unlike Jamestown, they were able to, you know, sustain their food, clothing, and shelter and get along with the indigenous. And because he really was content of a God-loving soul. He was able to connect with the Lenape. Most important, the queen goddess Winona. And a fellow member of the Philadelphian Society, a man by the name of William Markham, exploited Kelp's connection to the queen goddess to gain access to her and take her out, not far from here, like five minute walk at what is marked today historically as Lover's Leap. And the nexus of these two locations, the proximity of these two locations is a great clue as to, you know, what went down, you know? And, uh, but ultimately the source for these events, you know, and say dead men tell no tales, but uh, that's not necessarily true here in Philadelphia, you know, here the living and the dead are side by side, it's a haunt where ancestors have a strong presence and a clear voice. And they want their stories told, you know? So, these are the works we're doing in Great Mystery Philadelphia, telling those untold stories that the ancestors want known, like what really went down. So help us, you know, reveal these buried truths. $4,400, 44 days is our goal. Rossbend.com. GoFundMe slash Great Mystery Philadelphia. These is the web links. Yeah. Your support will go towards a redemptive effort. Yes, I give thanks.